R&D as a percentage of sales is close to 20% in this industry, more than four times the, the average, much more than any other uh, so-called high technology manufacturing industry, including computers, which we think of as sort of the ultimate in high tech. How much money does it take to develop each pharmaceutical? Almost $400 million, and I'll tell you, I think, what is a little bit of a funny story behind this number. For years, we had used the number $231 million to develop, research, and bring to market a new pharmaceutical. And even though I believe I work for the greatest industry in the world, uh, not everybody has a universal admiration for the pharmaceutical industry, including some members of the United States Congress. And uh, one of our congressmen said to, uh, to us, to our president, he said, I don't believe you. You say it costs $231 million, but I don't believe you, and I'm going to look into this. And so he had the, uh, one of the offices of the Congress, an independent agency that does research, he said, look into this and come back and tell me, how much does it really cost? And they did their research and they wrote their report and they went back to Congressman Waxman from California and they said, Mr. Congressman, you're correct. It doesn't cost $231 million. It really costs more like $359 million. So, and that is, of course, in $1990. So what we believe the figure is more around uh, $400 million. Now, I should add that this is what it costs in the United States. Uh, because of the FDA process, and the, it's based on running uh, the cost of clinical trials in the United States. And we'll talk about uh, later this morning some of the benefits and opportunities for developing the industry in countries such as Jordan and in regions such as the Middle East, where the costs don't necessarily have to be as high because the, the uh, level of economic development and the cost structure is different. Why does it cost so much? Well, for one thing, it takes a long time. We average 10 to 12 years uh, between uh, invention of the molecule and the, the patenting of the molecule takes place fairly early on in the process. I'd like you to remember that point because I'll be coming back to it when we talk specifically about intellectual property. Uh, and also, of 5,000 molecules that are synthesized in the laboratory that are invented by a pharmaceutical scientist, only one makes it to the market. So there's a, there's a tremendous burden on those few molecules that do become new medicines to be successful in the marketplace, and companies depend on that one molecule to fund the ongoing R&D that takes place uh, year in and year out. And that's why the unauthorized copying of even one product in even one market is a very, very serious issue for us. What are the results of this investment? particularly by the American industry, well, you'll see in the last 15 years, over 200 new medicines, more than any other country, although on that graph, it looks as though Japan is pretty close. A more telling statistic, however, is what we call globalized drugs. Those are drugs that are uh, approved in, in most countries and that you gain a wide acceptance by the medical profession as effective and safe therapies. By that measure, as you can see, the United States industry accounts for about <coughs> half, and no other country is really very close. The Japanese, just as a point of interest, uh, do a good job of patenting uh, a number of molecules, but many of them do not get acceptance in other countries. Who is really the source of these new products? Who makes new medicines? Sometimes people believe, well, it's the government or it's the uh, universities that do the research and then the companies just patent the product and sell it. Well, that's not true. Uh, in the United States particularly, we have an um, institute called the National Institutes of Health. They do do a lot of uh, basic biomedical research. Our industry spends about four or five billion dollars more than they do every year on research. But they, they do research into the physiology of disease. It's the private industry that actually researches the way that different chemical agents work against bacteria or viruses or health conditions, and that develops a medicine and, and patents it. Yes. That's 
that's also true in biotechnology. I think that uh, we're just in the infancy of the biotechnology revolution. I believe very strongly that biotechnology will change the world as much as any invention in history really has, whether it's the, the automobile or the computer chip or space travel. We're going to see unbelievable things happening in the next uh, decade. And I believe that the American industry will be in the forefront of that revolution. And one of the reasons is because we have a very good system of intellectual property protection for biotech and, and genetically engineered products. People often think, oh, the huge pharmaceutical industry, or let's say, oh, the pharmaceutical giant. Well, you'll see that we would like to put the size of our industry in perspective. These, again, are based on American figures. For eight diseases alone, the cost of uncured diseases is over $500 billion. How does that compare to the size of the pharmaceutical industry? It's about 10%. So the value that we provide to healthcare systems and to patients is, if you look at it in those terms, absolutely phenomenal. One pharmaceutical company, even uh, actually the whole size of the industry, if you look at it in terms of the American sales, is maybe half the size of large industrial companies such as General Electric or General Motors, both of which have well over a hundred billion dollars in sales annually. So our entire industry is half the size of some of the large global industrial corporations. That brings me to the subject of intellectual property protection. In any industry where the development costs of the product are in the, what we would call the upfront in the beginning stages, and the, but the cost of production of the good itself is relatively small, there will be concerns about copying. How much does it cost, how much effort does it take to develop a new software program compared to the effort it takes to copy a diskette in a computer? How much uh, artistic work does it take to write a book or make a movie compared to how much effort it takes to stand at a photocopy machine and copy the book or copy a VCR tape? The answer is obvious. It's not quite that easy in pharmaceuticals, but for many products, it's absolutely uh, a fraction of the cost to copy a, a molecule compared to invent it. And of course, to do the testing, uh, to make sure that it is safe, that it is effective, and that it's made properly. So one, one issue I'd like to stress here is the one of fairness. From the point of view of the United States, <laughs> and other uh, industrialized countries such as Europe and Japan, the, the terms of trade for, for my country, for the American economy, have changed. We're no longer an industrial society. We are a post-industrial society. The, the industries, the goods, the products in which we have comparative advantage are no longer steel or textiles or even agricultural goods to some extent. Where, where is our comparative advantage? It's in pharmaceuticals. It's in the information industry. It's in uh, certainly the entertainment industry. Those industries have one thing very basic in common. It quite simply would not exist without intellectual property protection. So one reason I'm here is because I would like to appeal to countries in the region to think about the aspect of fairness. As you seek to develop and grow economically, you seek trade agreements with countries such as the United States, you seek improved access for your goods into the North American market, and we're an open economy, and we give you that market access. And we say, come and compete. Outsell your competitors, whether they're American or Canadian or Korean. <coughs> come, come to our market and, and make some money. But in, uh, for my industry, in many countries, including Jordan, that aspect of fairness, that aspect of market access, is in fact denied. 